Hello, this is a very practical video that will apply to most of your practices. What if you've got just train wreck teeth, old endo, patched up fillings, and you've got to get those teeth out? What do we do? So I'm going to take, I'm going to extract these teeth, I'm going to graft the sockets and set it up for placement of impl implants six months later. You can see just old K, big old fillings, just everything's broken down. So I'm not trying to do a full mouth reconstruction on this guy. He's an elderly person, upper 80s, and we're just trying to get him through the country in a comfortable way. So we're taking out these two teeth right here, and then I've grafted the socket with platelet-rich fibrin and artificial freeze-dried bone, and we're gonna let that heal for six months, let the bone get hard. You can see, not the best dentistry. We're not trying to reconstruct his mouth. At his age, that would not be appropriate. So painless and profound local anesthesia. Be sure, when people say, my dentist could never get me numb, what I know is they don't know how to give local anesthesia. You have to do an intraligamental injection if you're going to get a lot of these people dead numb. If you think you're going to just infiltrate and extract a tooth or give a mandibular block and extract a tooth or do endo, you're dreaming. You've got to do an intraligamental after you do the infiltration, after the mandibular block, and they will be dead numb, numb as a post, every time. Okay, that was the interligual. Now we're drawing platelet-rich fibrin. When I place platelet-rich fibrin, I like to mix it with either Maxius or Bioss freeze-dried bone. It gives it some substance. If you're just trying to pack uh, platelet-rich fibrin in a socket, it's trying to, it's like working with jello. It's just kind of squirming. So I'll show you how I use it. You can see if you like that. It works really well. We're gonna spin it down. Now we spin it, we always spin two cycles and sometimes we'll even spend three. So I'm gonna extract those teeth with a rubber dam. Now I use a rubber dam for almost anything, but I use my technique of rubber dam, where you cut a long hole and just put the teeth through it. You're not trying to do one floss per tooth. Watch that video on fast and easy rubber dam placement. I like a rubber, this type of rubber dam because what does it accomplish? The main thing I want it to accomplish is to keep the pieces of old crown and tooth from being aspirated by the patient. I want to keep 99% of the water out of the patient's mouth and I want to keep their tongue, lips, cheek out of the operating field and it accomplish all those. If you learn this rubber dam technique, you'll use a rubber dam for almost everything and I use it many times for extraction. And I think patients really like it because they're not worried about swallowing something or aspirating something. So I know this is going to be a train wreck taking these teeth out. There's so much decay, big fillings, just patchwork quilt. So I'm demonstrating this to show we all have these cases come in and what do you do with them? If it's an elderly patient, it's not a perfect full mouth reconstruction. We're just trying to get that patient through the country to have some teeth that they can chew. Cosmetics is not an issue, though we want to make them comfortable and functional. I'm taking these pieces out, and you can see just giant fillings, buildups on those teeth. They're just these huge fillings on the teeth and broken down. It's a, they're just broken off of the gum line. So what am I thinking about here? Well, I'm thinking about I need to preserve the facial and the palo bone, which serves as a trough to put the graft in and that's where we're going to place the implant. If you if you lose the facial and the palatal bone, but you won't have enough bone, vertical bone to place an implant. Because remember the sinus, the floor of the sinus is going to limit the implant because we've got to have enough bone from the alveolar crest to the floor of the sinus to place an implant. I like to have at least five millimeters of good solid bone. Less than that, you know, you can do a sinus lift with bone graft, you get into a much bigger procedure. I do those, I've taken people to Mexico and taught them how to do it. But it's a pain, it's an expensive thing, and it's inappropriate for somebody this age, most of the time. So what I'm trying to do is preserve the facial and the palatal bone. So I want to take the tooth out in this line and not move, not extract it facially, because if I do, I'm going to lose a lot of that facial bone. 
So these are just very difficult to extract, just coming out in pieces. And then I'm going to curette the socket. See the tissues overgrown. Access is such a big part. See, just what do you do? You know, you know it's going to be a very difficult extraction. So I'm trying to get my, my forceps past the filling on good solid tooth structure so I can mobilize it. And I'm doing my best to preserve the facial and the palatal bone. So if I'm removing that palatal root, what I'm gonna do is remove some of the bone toward the center of the tooth. Remember, the goal is to preserve the facial and the palatal bone. So you create kind of a trough for a cylinder to put your graft material in that hopefully will preserve that bone between the alveolar crest and the floor of the sinus so you have at least five millimeters when you come back in six months after the graft is healed to have room for an, uh, enough space for an vertical space for an implant. So this is the platelet rich fibrin and you spin this down. We always spin it two cycles. A cycle is eight, eight minutes. So lately we've been spinning it three cycles. So that'd be 24 minutes. So I try to do the draw the platelet rich fibrin before I start the extraction so that we've got time to spin it 24 minutes. And that really gives us the best platelet rich fibrin clot. It's interesting how the different people have different qualities of blood because sometimes you just won't have much of a, of a fibrin, platelet rich fibrin clot in the vial. This is what you want to see right here. We found if we spin it at least two cycles and a lot of times three, we get the best platelet rich fibrin clots. The PRF was ready to take out of the vials and place on the tray so that it can be getting ready. While I remove these, you want to put the, the lid on top of it, which puts pressure on the platelet rich fibrin strip and it squeezes the serum out of those strips. So it's getting ready while I'm finishing the extraction. We're creating space to move these pieces into, but I want to preserve the facial and the palatal. I'd rather create the space on the mesial and the distal. Remove any excess tissue so you've got visualization trying to get movement. The decay, old fillings, brittle teeth, he's an older gentleman. Clean up that excess tissue, curette the sockets. We'll be sure you're gonna have some granulomas from infection through the years. You wanna curette that out real well. I'm drawing the serum in a syringe and squirting it on the, the BIOS freeze-dried bone. Then I'm putting the platelet-rich fibrin in with the BIOS and just cutting it into pieces. And I've wet the BIOS freeze-dried bone with the serum. Then I'm packing this into the socket. And like I said, I find the granules of the freeze-dried bone to help, it give, help give it some consistency. Then I like to put a matrix over the top of the graft material because it creates a flatter surface. If you've just got the graft material in the socket, it's kind of an indurated surface. Now you can put a strip of the platelet-rich fibrin over the graft. You know, that can also create a flat surface. But I find that resorbable collagen matrix makes the best surface. And I like a matrix, a matrix like Dynamatrix that can form, when it's wet, it conforms to the surface you place it on. I don't want a stiff shirt. I want one that when you wet it, you can, you can mold it. And so I'm cutting this to fit right over the edges and tuck it just a little bit under the flaps on each side. I like to cut the corners off. Then I'm just trying it in, just cutting the corners off so it fits over the top on the surface of the graft and just tucks a little bit into the flap on each side. Then I'm going to use 3-0 gut suture. You want to take a deep bite with your suture. You don't want just a little shallow bite or it'll pull out. You want to make a deep bite, cover the matrix, 
so that it's nice and stable. And remember this suture will dissolve in four to seven days, which is plenty of time for the clot and the tissue to become stable. I always use resorbable suture because the patient, after an extraction, they're probably going to be sore for a week or two. And I, you know, it's just sometimes the tissue may have grown over the suture and just for a lot of reasons. I either use 4-0 or 3-0 gut suture. For extra 3-0 for extractions, if I'm doing periodontal surgery, I usually use 4-0. And then you don't have to remove it. It's good for me and good for the patient in a week or two. Just want to put enough suture that you stabilize the graft and the resorbable collagen matrix. Well, this is before and after, before and after, nice and stable. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. It's time. It is time to take your dentistry practice to the next level and you know it. You just haven't known how to do it until right now. That's where DentistryMasterclasses.com steps in. At DentistryMasterclasses.com, Dr. Cutbreath is offering you his greatest work and his best cases. Here's everything that you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos, an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, and Dentistry Masterclasses comprehensive cases for study and reference. And you're going to get before and after photos of Dr. Cutbreath's fantastic restored work. So, great deal. 40 bucks, that is it. For 40 bucks, you're gonna get all of this. So go right now to dentistrymasterclasses.com and subscribe today and change your life, change your practice.